at 5 p.m. I would like to call this meeting to order. We do have a quorum tonight. First on, the, on our agenda is to approve the minutes from our November 8th, 2021 meeting. Do I have a motion? Yes. To approve, motion to approve. Okay. Right. Second. We have a motion from um, Ms. Cole and a second from Mr. Frazier. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you. Hey, how are you? You're fine. Okay, the first order of business tonight, we need to appoint a library board chairman. Do we have a motion for a chairman at this time? I nominate uh, Melissa for chairman of the library board. All right, so we have a nomination for Bagan Honeycutt. Bagan, it's okay. Do we have a second? Second. We have a second. Any discussion? All, right. All in favor? Aye. 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 Uh, any opposed? Okay, thank you. Ms. Honeycutt for take, or Alderman Honeycutt for taking uh, no the position of our library board chairman. Absolutely. So at this time, I will turn over the agenda to you. All righty. So looks like our next order of business is to make a motion to appoint a library board vice chairman. Do we have any nominations? I will nominate myself as vice chair. Have a nomination for Bridget Cole for vice chair. Do I have a second? Second. Got a second? <laughs> Any discussion? All right, all in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carries. All right, moving on to discussion. Uh, the planning retreat presentation that was held on March 10th, 2022. Um, I was there for that one. Yes, you were. <laughs> it was great, it was, it was great, Donna, Miss Donna has a lot of things uh, a lot of things she would like to see and I think they are all awesome and they would they would do the library even better than what it already is which I didn't think was possible all right Ms. Donna would you like to touch on that some sure thank you so much You're and welcome. congratulations chairman thank you I look forward to a great year and congratulations vice chair <clears throat> And we want to welcome Dr. Martin Burgess to our board. Welcome, uh, we are very excited to have you with us. Thank you. Okay, so we did have our planning retreat, our planning workshop, and during that time, the uh, directors are asked to give their vision, uh, talk a little bit about the library, and then also, or the different departments, and also to request some needs at that time. So if you will go through your packet with me, you can see on slide two, the mission statement. And our library board. Next time I have this, we will have chairman and vice chairman beside those names. We do have one vacant position. Excuse me. And then I did talk a little bit about what is a library. Uh, we talked about, do you remember Dewey? Yes, and, and we still catalog with our Dewey numbers for the nonfiction. And I read a little story there about once upon a time, you know, you would have to go in and thumb through the card catalog and you would smell those cards and everything and, you know, want to make sure you put them back in the right position. And uh, we would jot down the Dewey numbers on a small slip of paper with a little bitty golf pencil. And we would walk tiptoed through the library not to cause a disturbance. Well, that's not so much anymore. Uh, during summer reading, if you come in, you will see we will have marching children marching through the library, playing musical instruments. We want to get our patrons involved. The adults have been known to jump right in and march with them. Um, I would like to read this verbatim on page seven or slide seven. Times have definitely changed and Laverne Public Library is not an outsider to the changing times. We are an active participant. 
Fast-paced lifestyles have encouraged libraries to reassess the standard ways of providing service to our patrons. We have embraced the grab-and-go approach with displays and easier access to materials. And during the pandemic, when we were shut down to people coming inside, we truly embraced that because we offered curbside. And our patrons love that. We really did quite, a, quite well with circulation at that time. On page eight, Laverne Public Library is committed to providing diverse and inclusive materials and programming for our community. Having a diverse material collection can support all patrons in finding titles that they can connect with on some level while declaring their own identities and to develop positive understanding about others. That's something that I would like to say and give kudos to our staff. We take patron suggestions. We are an independent library. We're not connected to a branch. We're not connected to a main library. We are independent. So we can buy and purchase things that our community wants. And that's just really neat because we live in a very diverse community here. And so it's wonderful to be able to do that. And we are just embracing that and moving on. Slide nine, the most important asset of any library goes home at night, the library staff. Without the staff, it would just be a building. And on 10, you will see our current employees. 11, this is our current positions. You can see that we have uh, six full-time positions. One has been vacant for over a year. Uh, part-time positions, we have 11 part-times. Four are currently vacant. On slide 12, these are some proposed positions that the staff and I feel like would really help our library out. We would like to go to, I have to count real quick, eight full-time positions and seven part-time positions. We may need to go to six part-time positions in order to make the monies right, in order to hire in the full-time positions. Finance is working with that. HR is working with me to see what we can do. We would like to change the uh, job titles. Currently, everyone except myself as the director and uh, Lorna, who is listed as a child librarian in our current positions, we would like to go to library director, youth services coordinator, admin assistant catalog, library assistant youth services, library assistant circulation, library assistants, assistant reference, library assistant book process and repairs, and a library assistant floater. I feel like if I have a full-time position in our CERC, and our REF, and our children's desk, then what we would need to do with the part-time positions is to fill in those time slots. I think we would have more consistency. I think it will be easier for communication-wise. It's very hard to communicate with all the staff when so many are part-time. I try my best through memos, through sending workers message through our atrium system, uh, notes on the wall. There's still times that they, I just miss getting everyone the information. If we had a full-time person at that desk, they could make sure that all of our part-times receive the information that they need. So this is what I'm proposing. I will keep you up to date on how the numbers play out and if this is something that we can possibly do. Slide 13, computers have become the nucleus of the public library. Slide 14, our request this year is to replace 32 patron computers. Uh, it's about $1,000 per computer for a total of 32,000. 
This would be 25 patron computers, and I have it broke down there for you, seven library staff computers, and also there's the breakdown. These are all in one units. There would be no towers on the floor, which is really exciting to us. Uh, those of you who remember the time that we had the backflow fail and we had three inches of water coming through the library like a river, we were able to save all the computers and all the books, but we were scurrying trying to get those towers up off the floor after the, uh, the electricity was cut off. Slide 15, plans for the office staff computers and the children's patron computers. Uh, the office staff computers will be replaced by new computers that IT has purchased. It's already been purchased. And then the children's patron computers, there's eight of those. They currently have the small tower, the little brains of the computer that's underneath the desk. Works really well. But the monitors need upgrading and the keyboards. And so uh, the Senior Center recently had a lot of their computers removed, and they're the Acer brand. And Glenn feels like that would be the best for the children's computers. So I think that will work out well. That would save some money and yet get us to the needs. All of those will be upgraded to Windows 10. We currently run Windows 7. And as the mayor has said, he's been over there a couple of times to use the computers and they are very slow. Slide 16, we're excited about this. <laughs> I see some applause going on. Uh, we're requesting 7,500 to jumpstart us with to add playaways and wonder books to our collection. The playaways are audio books that have the, uh, the, explain to us, Bridget, because your son uses them. That you need, because now in most cars, there's no DVD players anymore. So this is going to be like a, a, a book they can take and listen to, and it's got everything in a compact little system. So mm. it's no longer going to play in, play in a CD player or play in your car player. It's all there in one piece. And they're available in all the popular books. Uh, it's from easy readers to chapter books all the way up to adults. We're going to start with our easy readers and our chapter books for children. And then I think we will put some adult books in there in YA. And then the Wonder Book is actually the same thing. It is audio book, but it has the big book with the audio attached to it that they put their earphones or their earbuds in, and they can turn the page while they're listening to the story, and that way they can see the pictures. So I think this is a good move. Uh, kind of reminds me, I don't know if any of you are young enough to remember the cassette players and the, video, the little cassettes that we had to put in, a little tape player, and then she would say, and when you hear the ding, turn the page. Ding, and you would turn the page, you know. Similar to that, but I'm sure not with that voice anymore. <laughs> and then page 17, a couple of miscellaneous requests. I did not have the numbers on those. Uh, our parking lot needs some love, and we would like to have it resurfaced and lines painted. And then our public restroom stalls, the doors need replacing. Our Parks and Rec maintenance guys are wonderful. They have been over so many times to straighten up those doors so that they would actually latch. But they're just, the only word I can come up with is wonky. They just uh, don't want to close and uh, it's very difficult. So we're looking into that. We don't have a price yet, but we'll see what we can do. And then thank you and questions. So do you all have any questions or concerns? No, the youth services coordinator, that's really what Lorna's doing now. It's really children's, right? Exactly. It's just a matter of Another changing title. her name title. Okay. Because she does youth services and uh, YA. She helps oversees the YA books. And this will help take care of a lot of uh, Saturdays for you, hopefully, adding yes, this many full-time yes. people. 
We won't see you every Saturday. <laughs> you won't see me every Saturday. Uh, even though I love that library, mm -hmm. I'm usually there on Saturdays to help fill in a part there. And uh, thank you for understanding and seeing that. But yes, this will help tremendously because our full-time people will do like all of our parts and all of our fulls do now. They will take one night a week, which we're open three nights until seven, and they'll take every other Saturday. And so it really helps share the load. If you work on Saturday, you're off on Friday. And so that really helps tremendously. So yes, with these full-time positions, it will work well. And if we can't get all of those full-time positions, even one would help. Okay. I hope you get it. All right. All right. <clears throat> Moving on to policy, unattended children in the library. This is something that we have been talking about also for over a year and just seems like we never have got into it or I have not been able to bring this up and get into it. Uh, I hope you had an opportunity to read that very long policy. We're not going to make a motion tonight. We'll, we'll be doing that in May, but I would like to have some discussion of your thoughts. Uh, currently, the very meat of it is all children under 10 years shall be adequately supervised by a responsible parent. Non-parental caregivers must be at least 18 years old. If a child is under the age of 10, uh, we would like for a parent or a child care provider to be in the program with the child. It says that children may not be left unattended for more than six hours. So we're talking 11 and 12 year olds. Uh, I mean, I'm sorry, we're talking 10 year olds can be dropped off and left at the library for six hours. Now this is an old policy. So I want to get you guys' opinion on this. So I will tell you that I did research today and uh, Rutherford County Library System says 18. You have to be 18 or with a parent. Uh, anything younger than 18 has to be with a parent and that parent or guardian has to have a card. I couldn't find any other information for Metro or any other surrounding areas, but I did find one other um, place in, I think it's Illinois, was a year younger than our policy, but they said uh, in their policy that if, if the child was left under nine, uh, then they were d directly calling child services, not, not waiting. They okay. not uh, giving any time there. And they had stipulations in their policy that if the parent continued to do it, um, then they lost their privileges in the library for up to six months. Okay. So that's what I found in my research. So back to Murfreesboro, Rutherford County system, you cannot go into the library if you're under the age, if you're 17 or under without a parent. That's what it says. Wow. Mm -hmm. hmm. Do we have, I don't want to say issues, but do we have children 10 and younger now being dropped off? We do. Okay. We have uh, one particular family that they drop off five children. Awesome. The oldest is 14. Um, I know we're being recorded, but I want to be very, very careful. Uh, maturity level is not there. And the four younger ones, I think they're anywhere from age 10 all the way down to about four, just go crazy. Uh, I have not been able to <coughs> talk to the parent. Uh, they usually are dropped off on Thursday nights, so I've stayed several Thursday nights, and that would be the nights that they were not dropped off. Uh, so if we had something that we could say, okay, this, which we do, we, we do have it, but it is, this particular policy um, to say, you know, they really need to be supervised and you can't just drop off and leave. I know I'm just rambling right now. No, no, that, that, I get that part. Maybe, maybe this is a question for our city attorney here. So let's just 
play pretend for a moment. So if a child gets dropped off under the age of 18, let's say maybe 10, obviously the library staff has a lot of things to do throughout the day. Right. Would the city help be held liable if that child were to walk out of the library and then all of a sudden come up missing? Um, so, I mean, that's why these, these policies are important, um, is, is just to basically to account for that right. um, um, in, in writing. So that would, this is a, a great thing, you know, to, to look at here. Right. Um, I mean, it would, would the library be held accountable or liable? I mean, that's, that's a pretty fact specific question. So the, the, you know, the real, the real question that we can handle right now is to enact some, some policy like this. And, you know, uh, I, I mean, legally, if the child's under 18, then, um, you know, you can, you can require supervision under certain circumstances. So I think that, um, you know, your plan to target it to what the, the issue is now is, is uh, it's a, certainly a legal way to go. Okay. I think I, what you researched, Mrs. Cole, with uh, 18 and under, I think that's a, that seems reasonable. It does seem reasonable, um, but with our library, we are within walking distance of a lot of latchkey kids. Gotcha. Mm -hmm. And we have a lot of children that come in, that behave, uh, they'll come in after school, they'll even get off the bus and come on in. Uh, we have no problem with that at all. It is the young, young children that oh, okay. we have I a problem with. Now. Okay, so that's uh, where that age of 10 comes from. It's the age, gotcha. right, okay. right. Um, and we are yeah. within walking distance of a lot of you oh, know, the apartments, yeah. our weekly rentals. Um, are you wanting to see the age go higher? A, a little, little bit? higher. I would okay. love to see the age maybe 12. Right. Right. And then I would like to have something in there that says, of course, we do have something in there that says that the children have to behave and to follow uh, on the back. You will see the uh, guidelines for children's department. And I would like to have it where if they do not, I have something that I can show the parents and say, this is the reason that we are asking your, you to come and supervise your child until they begin following the rules. Does that make sense? Yes. Mm -hmm. I think age 12 is a good age. That's when we start having what we call our teen volunteers. Uh, we do try to, when we have our teen volunteers, we schedule them for under three hours at a time in the library. Okay. I think our hours need to drop a little bit. Right now we're saying six hours they can stay. Mm. Even four hours may be doable. Um, this is why I wanted to get other people's opinions and, and see, and we want to come up with a really good verbiage, which I know our attorney can help us with that when we get to that point. So would you like to see that hour drop to, to like four hours in a day where they're not left unattended, or is the six hours okay? I would like to see it left, uh, dropped. Dropped to four? Yes. I agree with you on that. I think that would... I think six is way too long. Right. We did have a situation where a child, and he was, he was 13. Uh, his dad, we noticed, was dropping him off in the morning, and uh, this was during summer, and didn't come back until the dad got off work. So he would get dropped off at 9 and would stay mm. until about 5 or 5.30 wow. every day. Mm -hmm. I was able to take care of that one, you know, just telling him, you know, the child needs more interaction. <laughs> we can't sit here and guard them. We take care of our patrons. I mean, we look out for them. But the child was very bored. He could only read so many books, and he didn't have lunch with him. Mm. Oh. So he was there all day, and uh, so the father said he understood and that he was going to try to find something else. But I said, no, he's welcome to come, you know, for short periods of time. Yeah, absolutely. It's such a catch-22. But having this policy would help you explain that. 
I'm sorry? Having this policy in place would help you explain that. It will help. Yeah. It will help tremendously. When I have something that I can say, this is our policy that was adopted by our board, you know, something that we have sat together and really looked at, that it truly helps. And there are exceptions, and I understand that. Um, but I just want to have the safety of the children, and it worries our staff when we have those young children. And then we do have some young children that just run. Uh, we had a family that the mom would come in and sit on the sofa. She was there, but they would just go all over the place. Uh, went back to the back one day, and one little one had taken his arm and raked off two or three shelves of books. Mm. And then one of the staff gave him some stickers and some paper to sit down and to put stickers on. And later we found stickers on the wall and on the table. So uh, just trying to curtail some of that right. with a policy. Mm -hmm. This policy is already in effect, right? It is. This okay. one has, was so adopted in 2013. Modifying. And we still have it. And we still have, I've taken part of the verbiage and put it up where they could see it's enlarged so that that's what we use when we talk to our parents and how do you monitor how do you know when a kid comes in and how long that kid's staying who's keeping track of that i mean how do you do that right we have staff that are very aware of what's going on uh, we have to be of where we are we watch the doors Oh, yeah. And we are very aware of who comes in and who stays, you know, because we are a smaller library and I, we have very attentive staff. You know, not that they are out to get someone, but they're out to be aware and to notice things that go on. Um, if they see a backpack sitting over in the corner or something, they'll let me know so that we can make sure everything is safe. So um, there's not really one particular person who keeps track of it. It's just the staff as a whole being attentive. Okay. Okay. <clears throat> I agree with you on 14 and four hours. 14? Oh, what? no, you said 12. 12. 12. I'm sorry. If, if we need 14, <clears throat> we can. I think 12 is a good place to start. Okay. In four hours. I can I can agree with that. That twelve would definitely be a good place to start. I didn't know it was six hours. That's that's a that's, that's a, a long, long time. time. Big time. That's frame. a long that's a long time frame. Um, but four hours is definitely more user friendly. Is that the word I'm not really I look, that's probably not the word I'm looking for, but that's probably much better. Yes. Um. Yes. Okay, so I guess what we need to do now, uh, we were going to try to have it all together by our next meeting in May so that we can make a motion. So what would be your suggestion on us to do? Do I need to take these ideas and put them down and then get that to you to let you see? That would be great, yeah. Okay. I mean, that, that works for us, I think. I mean, I think it's best if, if maybe you kind of write down what it is that you want and then send it to me and Evan and I can review it and edit it um, um, with you. Perfect. Is okay. that okay with you all? Absolutely. I want the stipulation that if they continue to do this after they've been told, then they've lost their privileges. That's a very good question. So um, part of the policy manual says that, uh, you know, they have an uh, opportunity to appeal before the board, but it does say monthly. I guess at that time they were meeting monthly. Um, but I think that needs to be in there. I like um, that. Idea. Um, the privileges need to be removed. Well, we meet bi monthly, so uh, two months okay. until, so until 60 it's days. Until, until the next, the next okay. offer. Okay. I like that. We will need to, to keep some provision for, a, for an appeal. Sure. <clears throat> Two months is fine, but yeah. Right. yeah. Okay. Yeah. And I do, when I get the word from the staff that we have some 
disturbances in the library. I do try to go out, talk to the children, and then stick around to talk to the parents. And like I said, that has helped some in the past, but there are some that it needs to be, okay, this is what's gonna happen if this happens again after we've had a warning. Okay. So. All right. Thank you all very much. And so I'll get busy working on that and I'll send it all out to you all email, let you put your thoughts in it and then I'll send it on over and uh, we'll see if we can get this done by May. Okay. So well, we'll we be start sorry. summer reading in June. What other policy are we gonna try and work on next? We're gonna work on the meeting room policy next. Okay. Um, at this point, after since we've been with COVID, we have said that city events and library programs only in the meeting room. When we get through COVID a little further and when we're feeling better about group meetings, I would love for us to come up with a policy of what groups can meet, uh, have a time frame of when they of how many times they can meet consecutively. Um, Girl Scouts and Boy Scouts like to use the rooms and we love for them to. At this point, our rooms are pretty full with our firefighters. Uh, they are taking the EMT certification. And so from January until April, they have been in meeting room two. And then we have our adult education and ESOL classes going on in meeting room one. They do two to three days a week during the day. So the evenings we do have available. Uh, right now we are doing our adult craft again in per person. So that's happening in the meeting room. But all of our other special children's programs, we have moved to the story time room. So it would make a couple of meeting rooms available. And I would like for us to look at that right now. Um, I don't have the full policy with me. Bridget, did you yeah, find okay. what it says about meeting rooms? I can find it real quick while you're talking. Okay. So that would be the next policy that I would like for us to work on. And then in this are several policies that we're gonna to have to do in house. It's uh, our daily operations, things of this sort. It's just old wording, talking about VHS and different things. And I know that we're beyond that. In a long so, time. <laughs> <laughs> so those, that's wording that we will need to change. So uh, in the 2013 policy manual it says that meeting rooms are not of not available to the public. Meeting rooms will only be used for library run and library sponsored programs. So, Okay. And so but. I was actually then not following the policy because I was able, I did let certain groups come in. I, uh, I, that was when we had our other director right. at that time. Uh, so that definitely needs to be taken care of. And I, like I said, I would like to see what we can come up with. We will be using the rooms quite a bit during summer reading, June and July. So if we could have a meeting room policy in place, maybe by August, then that would get us when we start having some of the groups come in and wanting to use our room. And maybe by then it will, we will feel more comfortable with meeting at the, as a group. Okay. Real quick, I want to go back to the unattended children and the library policy. Would we have to have two readings on that? I understand it's not the same as a, as a BOMA meeting in case the verbiage in it we didn't agree with on the first reading, or would it just pass the first reading? I, to my knowledge, we could pass it on the first reading. Okay. Just wanted to double check. Yeah, and I'll, I'll check on that uh, and get back to you on that, but, but to my knowledge, it's just one. Awesome. Thank you. All right, moving on to past events. The holiday reading program was held on November 15th, 2021 through February 19th, 2022. We had a, to we had a total amount of entries, 3,813. That is awesome. It was a great, great reading program. It got people <clears throat> in, got people uh, checking out. It was wonderful. That, that's an that's a awesome number, a lot higher than 
you know, most would expect. Right. <laughs> We're very, very pleased with it. Oh, yeah. It's great that we have so many people in the city that want to come to yes. the library. I think that's a, that's a big deal. Um, and then we had an afternoon visit with Santa. We had 90 children and their families. It was a fun time. So, we had a lot of exciting children, excited children, and we had a lot of crying children uh -oh. this year. Um, <laughs> Santa, who I know very well, mm -hmm. was a little disappointed that several of them cried for him. But uh, <laughs> Mrs. Claus tried to remind him that that just happens at certain ages, and that's just the way it is. Yeah. But it was a great time. The children's department does really well with getting together goodie bags for them. And this year, we also had uh, two miniature horses come in wow. to have their picture made with Santa. So that was an added surprise. Wow. <clears throat> and uh, the children really enjoyed that. That's awesome. That is awesome. All right. Upcoming events, the LHS Project Lit Spring into Lit, Saturday, March 19th, 2022, from noon to 2 p.m. If you'd like to touch on that. Sure. That's, this is really exciting. This is the first year that we have done this. Uh, the Project Lit came to me and asked if they could come and do a library card drive and maybe an open house, and oh, wow. they would provide all of the different crafts and, and different activities to do. So if you notice, you have a flyer there, and it is called the Spring into Lit at the Laverne Public <coughs> Library Community Open House. They're gonna have a food truck right now it's Kona Ice, we'll be out in our parking lot. Uh, we're gonna have giveaways, face painting, arts and crafts, all of these things will be done by the Project Lit students. So excited. It will be from 12 to two on Saturday, this coming Saturday. Uh, they are accepting gently used children's and young adult books for their community book drive. We have already had patrons and different people bring in books. So we wow. have right now a full cart that has been donated toward LHS. Great. Really wow. excited. Uh, there's going to be a children's story time and then a teen movie time, which is the hate you give. We do have the license for that. Then there's going to be an author chat and book signing with E.E. E. Sorrels. Are you all familiar with her? We yeah. have her book in our collection. Uh, she came by about a year ago and asked me if I would consider putting her book in. We did. It's great. It's called With Raspberry Tea. Mm -hmm. I went ahead and ordered an extra copy. And after the author check, chat, those who are in the audience will be able to put in an entry and possibly win one of her books. Awesome. So we're really excited. Very good poetry. Uh, just, just a great book. It's going to be a puppet show. Now, this puppet show was written and going to be performed by the Project Lit students. Wow. Uh, we took them up to the puppet stage, and they saw like 10 puppets, and they were so excited. And I said, hold on. <laughs> so we walked down to Miss Lorna's office, where there are puppets on shelves on top of desks hanging on her desk and they went crazy. <laughs> so they chose some puppets that they wanted to do and going to do actually two puppet shows and they're gonna be different. So two puppet shows are different. Now the children's story time's going to be the same. They're all done at different times, but the puppet shows, I can't wait to see. I think that's gonna be so exciting to see those students in there doing the puppet shows. The second author chat and book signing is going to be by Chris Stedman. And Chris wrote Time to Scrap. We, I bought two books. Uh, it, one is currently being cataloged to put into our system. This one will be one that we will give away. It's a great book and uh, Chris told Aaron today that he would really like to meet the mayor. <laughs> so I have a feeling the mayor will probably be there. And uh, he said he, that's, that was one of his wishes is to meet the mayor. So a great book. 
It says, are you all tall? Are you about it? Poverty, violence, racism, and hate are descriptions that are very familiar to black people, especially teens. 18-year-old Joseph faces all these things on a daily basis, and when it seems like life couldn't get any worse, he gets into trouble with the neighborhood gang. Uh -oh. Not going to give you any spoilers. <laughs> uh -oh. So this is our, our great community open house. We are looking forward to it. I think we're going to have a very good turnout. Uh, we are pushing to get library cards. They are actually doing a library card drive this week at Laverne High School. Awesome. So it should be a good day. Good deal. I wonder if uh, Library Larry will make an appearance. He was my favorite. <laughs> <laughs> Um, okay, the next event is the drive through egg hunt sponsored by Parks and Rec and Vets Memorial Park Saturday, April 9th, 2022 from 10 a.m. until 11.30 a.m. I know last year I had a blast. It was really awesome. It was different than what we normally do, but I think it went really well for the drive through I think it was good. It really did. <clears throat> It and was. we kind of wondered, okay, are the kids going to be disappointed not getting to pick up eggs? Well, they actually got more candy and, and eggs than they did if they would go out into the field with all those thousands of kids. And so it was a really a good, good time. And uh, I know Parks and Rec always appreciates the officials coming out. So I welcome the library board to come out and stand at the library tent and help us give out some goodies. Oh, yeah. It's it was so much fun seeing the little kids faces even especially for the little ones the little little ones that don't really get to go out there and yes. hunt the eggs because they're so little it was it was awesome I'm looking forward to it. All right next we have the book sale and the library gallery Saturday April 23rd through Saturday May 21st and that will be available during regular operating hours. Okay we do our book sale a little different now and we have not had a book sale in two years mm -hmm. so we wow. have a lot of donations that are ready to be sold in our book sale and not only is it books it's dvds uh, we have taken out the vhs uh, <laughs> audio books just a lot of different items for sale at a very reasonable price books start at 50 cents for hardbacks and go down to a quarter for for the paperbacks uh, we sell our DVDs, I think, for a dollar, which is a really good deal. And toward the end of the sale, more toward May, that week of May 21st, everything will be half price so that we can get those books and everything out. We always have a good turnout of people coming to purchase items. We've had people ask over and over again, when are you having one? And we are doing it in the gallery, like when you first walk into the library. And we have the marks so that we know what books are true for sale and not what books stay on our shelves. <laughs> right. <laughs> I'll have to tell my son about that. He'll be so thrilled yes. for that. He's doing book fair at school now and it's like the best thing ever. <laughs> Book I remember, fairs are awesome. I remember that. I was like, they still do those things with the scholastic books? I didn't I think like, they did. Yeah, I didn't either. I was like, that's so awesome. I got excited. So I think that's going to be great. Uh, going on to the City of Laverne block party held at the Veterans Memorial Park, Saturday, May 7th, 2022. Starts at 5 p.m. Last year was awesome. It was fantastic. Uh, the library did not make it the year before, but we did make it last year, and it was so much fun. Such a great turnout, uh, just to see all the vendors and all the departments and the officials out there. It was fun to hear the music going. So, and we'll have games again, like we usually do, that are free, and we'll have giveaways. So, if you come out and see us at the block party. So our next meeting, what we're going to do is we're going to nominate someone from the board for the dunk tank. If we oh, have the dunk okay. tank again this year. So we'll, we'll get those votes in now. <laughs> All righty. Our next library board meeting will be held on Monday, May 9th, 2020.
two. Excellent. All right, and moving on to library board comments. Uh, nothing in particular, doing a great job. Right, good deal. Uh, at the very end of the meeting, it, it, of the minutes of the last meeting, it says a few minutes of reading a day. And I want to correct that. It's the importance of reading 20 minutes a day. And uh, it helps uh, foster imagination, build your vocabulary, writing skills, uh, improves critical thinking. So it's not just a few minutes, but try and read 20 minutes a day. Excellent. <laughs> well, I, well, first of all, I want to... Um, Thank you for what, what's going to happen for the uh, Project Lit for at, at Laverne High. And um, I know the young man, uh, Chris Detman. Um, his brother is my son's best friend. Wow. And so we're going to be there to support him. But he is very excited Good. about this. My, uh, and I'm very, very excited that you're, that you're uh, doing this for him. And he is a great young man. So this is going to yeah. push him a long way into what he wants to really do with his, with his life. So I thank you so much. Welcome. It's a privilege for us. We love to have those young authors in. And we have some talent here in Laverne. We truly do. Um, the only thing I have, well, I have a couple things. First of all, thank you. I'm happy to be on the board. I'm looking forward to what we have coming up as far as events and everything going on. Uh, congratulations, Vice Chairman. Um, <clears throat> And that, that's really all I have. I'm really, really excited to be on the board because you do, the library does such great things. So it would be awesome to be a part of it, I think. And um, that's all I have. With that being said, I call this meeting adjourned.